Hi, I'm Nathan Staff from uh, Mayo Clinic. I'm a neurologist and I'm uh, describing our paper in Mayo Clinic proceedings called Ipsilateral Inflammatory Neuropathy After Hip Surgery with the lead author, Dr. Rupa Laughlin. The main findings of our uh, study uh, are that uh, neuropathies that can develop after hip surgery in the same leg of the hip surgery may very well have inflammatory etiologies in some cases. Uh, the work that we're presenting here builds on uh, a study that our group did back in 2010 looking at uh, more generally uh, inflammatory neuropathies that come on after surgery. Specifically in this article, uh, we report on seven patients who developed uh, neuropathies in the same leg that they had hip surgery in. Uh, in all of these cases, uh, they were found to have uh, surgeries, uh, found to have neuropathies within a month of the surgery. Um, we did an extensive evaluation of these patients, uh, which included EMG, MRI, uh, detailed neurologic examination, and also in all of the patients, they underwent a, a nerve biopsy. Now, the interesting finding that we uh, saw here was that when we took a nerve biopsy uh, quite distant from the site of surgery, oftentimes it was either a sensory uh, superficial nerve, uh, such as the sural nerve, uh, and we took this to the laboratory, uh, in six of the seven patients there was uh, evidence of a microvasculitis. Now, microvasculitis isn't something that you would normally expect to see in a nerve that just uh, experienced a mechanical injury. So the thought here is that the microvasculitis is rather an immune reaction or an inflammatory reaction uh, that's separate from the uh, mechanical insult that may or may not have happened during surgery. Um, the type of neuropathy that we saw in our patients actually was very similar to uh, what's been referred to as a lumbosacral radicular plexus neuropathy which is a uh, entity that's been described quite in detail by one of the co-authors, Dr. Jim Dick. Um, interestingly, this is uh, seen more in diabetics and is sometimes referred to as diabetic amyotrophy. So what we're thinking is happening here is that in these patients that develop neuropathy after hip surgery, uh, they've developed an inflammatory neuropathy uh, not unlike this lumbosacral radicular plexus neuropathy. Uh, interestingly, this sort of neuropathy often responds to immune therapy. So in six of the patients that we reported, we uh, used intravenous methylprednisolone, and in all the patients, uh, there was improvement of symptoms uh, when followed up later. The main improvement of symptoms was in pain, but there was also some weakness improvement as well. Oftentimes, people ask us what made us think about an inflammatory neuropathy in these sorts of patients. Well, I think first it goes back to our clinical experience with the lumbosacral radicular plexus neuropathy cases uh, that we've all seen in our clinical practice. Um, these patients look very similar to that. Other clues that uh, made us think of an inflammatory neuropathy were that in some of the cases, the neuropathy developed after the immediate postoperative period. In many cases, there was also progression of either pain or weakness after the surgery. Uh, many of them had severe neuropathic pain that made us think of inflammatory etiologies. Other patients had weakness or pain outside of the sciatic nerve distribution. And finally, in some cases, because there was no improvement of pain or weakness after 30 days, we were more suspicious of an inflammatory etiology. So in summary, I, I think one of the main take-home findings that, that we can report here is that not all in, uh, not all neuropathies that occur after surgery are due to uh, any sort of stretch, uh, cutting, or contusion of the nerve. Uh, we clearly show in this uh, study that the, some of the neuropathies may be driven by inflammation. Uh, therefore, if they're driven by inflammation, they may be amenable to immune therapy, which could certainly improve outcomes in patients. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our home page is www.mayocliniceproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, 
such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.com. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.